Brunswood is set to take on the Santa Fe Indians here at Bobby Blackfield. I'm Joe Hollier along with Kate. Oh, no. K no Kate tonight. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Kate Lyko is in Colorado. This duty calls. And uh, unfortunately, he's not here. Now, Josh Frittata, so y'all may know him as Josh Fritz, has uh, taken over for Cade here in the booth. And he is uh, going to be doing the uh, announcing tonight on the PA. And... Once he gets comfortable with it, we're probably going to slide the uh, headset on him and get some comments as uh, he's either coached or taught most of these uh, boys that are on the field today. Knows knows them extremely well. Uh, again, Fritz from uh, the junior high. Uh, most of these guys out here, including the uh, Hollier boys, has been under the uh, stern <laughs> warnings of Fritz over the years. So we'll we'll see once he gets comfortable. And then of course uh, we have the uh, uh, LA Lyco to uh, do the scoreboard. So if the scoreboard's messed up. You can blame uh, uh, Cade uh, like, uh, Offspring for that because uh, she will be doing that. And then we may have someone else coming in for pitch count. But as of right now we are in the uh, sweat box as we call it. No longer the press box since um, Benavides is uh, uh, too cheap to put out any money to fix the AC for the people that love him the most, but uh, we'll, we'll see how long we stay on the air as uh, <laughs> the sweat starts to roll here in the in the booth. Uh, we've had uh, so many games uh, that have been extremely cold. It's kind of nice just to have a, a normal baseball game uh, weather-wise. Now we do have 30 to 35 mile an hour winds blowing straight in. Jacob Rogers taking the mound for the Mustangs. As they set in their first pitch, line drive up the middle, single. And uh, if you want to get to Friendswood's pitching, that's how you got to look at it. You, don't, you cannot get up there looking at pitches. You got to look early because these guys throw strikes. And Kyler Thompson with a leadoff single to start the top of the first for the Indians. Brings up Caleb Burrow, the second baseman. Curveball in there for a strike. Glad to have you with us. Again, this is a uh, important district game. Two first place teams tied for the top spot, five and one in district. Indians are seven and seven overall. Mustangs eleven five and one. Rogers checking on the runner. Not close. Not a lot of guys stealing uh, this year. Did have um, oh, looking to bunt pro. Did have a couple of guys uh, try to steal on Maxi um, last game. Baytown. Uh, they were thrown out. Maxi also had two back picks that ended innings. That ball down in the dirt. Throw down. It's close. Uh, he just got back. One and one to Burrow. Piercy in on the grass. And that pitch looked good. Umpire says it's low. Two balls and a strike. Let's see if uh, Wolf changes the. Nope. Squares around again. This time does get the bunt down. Rogers will have to field it and make the play. So the 1 3 put out. Moves Thompson to sc into scoring position for Lozano. Here's a shortstop, Lozano. Number six, playing in the number six position. But he's hitting out of the three hole tonight. Wolf sacrificing early, just getting a runner in scoring position. Cur 
Ball. Back pick at second. It's going to be close. Woo! Man. South put the tag on him. Umpire was right there. You know, it doesn't pay. You coach and coach and coach secondary leads to kids. And honestly, against Dillon, you, you're going to have to come back and change your philosophy. Because you get that s secondary lead against Dillon, he will throw you out. One ball, one strike, one out, runner at second. Another good curve ball. And one and two now. Try to get him to chase one on the outside. It's two and two. Santa Fe, our neighbors just down Highway 6. Been a very good rivalry over the years. Another curveball. He does get a piece of that one. Stays two and two. As uh, Friendswood has moved around in the district. Um, Santa Fe has gone right along with them, and it just makes sense. It's a, it's a good matchup, and two schools close together. Try to get him chase up. And, and Lozano does a good job checking his swing, and it's full. Full count, three and two, one out, one on. And we're on the top of the first. The payoff pitch. Curveball ripped down the line and by Piercy, and the Indians are going to take a one to nothing lead. That curveball was up and hammered by Lozano. A great job by Lockhart getting over and holding him to a single. Still nobody out. I'm sorry, one out. We got the sacrifice. One out. And one on, and one in for the Indians. Another curveball, this one foul. Rodgers has struggled a little bit this season compared to last year and year before. Pitch called a ball. Low, one and one. Not getting that call tonight, at least not yet. Curve ball fouled off. Jacob, a Texas Tech commit, along with Maxie. Sure. Battery mates tonight. In on the hands, fouled off. So Ronnie Wolf playing a little small ball. Gets his runner moved over into scoring position. Lozano comes through with the uh, full count. Single down the left field line. Another good breaking ball. This one stays foul. Piercy let it go. It's going to be close. Because <laughs> he felt like he... Couldn't have thrown anybody out. See if that ends up being a, a wise play or not. Still one and two. Fastball. Got him looking. First strikeout for Rodgers. More importantly, it's out number two, and it brings up the
the right fielder, Jackson Stroud. Very close. Oh. Rogers thought he had him, so did Boots. Curveball in there for a called strike. Again, wind in your face. Bounced up in front of Maxi as Rogers via wild pitch. One ball, one strike. Nobody was nobody was watching the batter. <laughs> Asked for a check swing. So another Runner in scoring position for Santa Fe. Fastball off the plate, and it's two and one. Bryce Smith, the first baseman on deck. Curveball fouled away. That one hung up a little bit too. So I know I never really liked to pitch with the wind right at my back. Sometimes uh, your ball didn't break like you'd like it to. Yeah, kind of like a little bit of breeze in your face. And so far you can see Rogers breaking the ball is just not sharp. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, runner at second. Cur oh man. Good little off speed. Catches the inside corner. So back to back strikeouts looking will end the inning. But the Indians do get a run on one hit. And after half an inning, they lead one to nothing. You're watching Friendswood Mustang Baseball on VipeLive.com. Campus. Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Wow. Announcer extraordinaire. Josh Furtada says uh, 23 pitches for Rodgers in the top half of the first inning. Here's the senior catcher Dylan Maxey hitting 464. He has eight doubles. Has yet to go yard this year. hitting six last year. Not a great night to try and go yard. Fastball lined up the middle, but hit way too hard. <laughs> Got a good pitch to hit. And that's one of the rare first pitch fastballs I've seen Dylan even get this year. Brings up the shortstop. Reed South, 
13 RBIs on the year, batting 310. Having a nice, nice senior year, coming off a uh, first team all district. And this ball's lying into right center, a long run for the right center fielder. He's going to run it down though. So, two pitches, two outs. Here's Landry, five home runs on the year. Leads the team in RBIs with 24. Getting a point under Maxi at 463. And if he swings to this first pitch, I'm going to tear up his bubblegum card. Should be taking all the way at a boy. Kind of an unwritten rule. You just don't want a kid to have a three-pitch inning. That went in on the inside corner for a called strike. And it's one and one. That pitch up in the zone. But Boots hacking at it. It's one and two. Nothing but fastballs so far. Two outs, nobody on. And the one, two. We'll change up down and away, and it's two and two. Got in on the hands. A little roller, soft roller to second, and it's a one, two, three first for the Mustangs. And we will head to the top of the second. Mustangs trail one to nothing. You're watching Friendswood Mustang Baseball. Here's Bryce Smith, the first baseman. The 1 0 from Rogers is on the outside corner. Shout out to Harrison Vera and his man Cade watching tonight. Of course, Cade Lyko in Colorado. So there's a swing and a miss. It's 1 and 2. Shout out to uh, Select Spine and Sports, Dr. Dinky, Dr. Hollier. Those guys are here tonight as well. In on the hands and just got a piece of it. The one, two. Down in the dirt and it's two and two.
Two balls, two strikes. And now the count runs full. So Rogers already up in the pitch count. Goes full here to the first batter he faces in the second inning. And a fastball does not get the call, and it's a leadoff walk. So two innings straight now. The Indians have had the leadoff guy on. And we'll see if uh, Ronnie Wolf goes back to the small ball and gets to Los Santos to bunt here. De Los Santos, the third baseman for Santa Fe. And he gets down a good one. Nobody covering first. Goolsby, normally a shortstop, has moved over to second base. And uh, that was all Collins. Collins got to get over there and, and be there. And just a little bit out of position. So it'll be a. Uh, He'll end up being a base hit. You can't assume the uh, error. It's it's a mental. It goes down as a mental error only. So two on with nobody out now, and Rhett Ostermeyer showing bunt. Takes a strike and it's one and one. Beauty down the third baseline. Tough play for Piercy. And he's got him by half step. Great play by Piercy. So two runners in scoring position now for the number nine hitter, Nick Jaco. Jaco playing left field tonight. Chance to uh, add another run here for the Indians. Asking, said no swing. First year coach Bobby Black, the man this feels named after, is in the audience as well tonight. This is his grandson is out there playing right field. Good heat there from Rogers, but up in the zone it's two and one. Two balls and a strike, one out. In there, for a called strike. I almost had to come out of the uh, press box if he didn't call that a strike. Two balls and two strikes. Breaking ball, it's got a piece of it. Dylan held on to it. And there's two away. First strikeout swinging. And then brings up Kyler Thompson, who singled and scored. Nope, now he's going to ask help from the field on Byer, saying that Dylan caught that off bounce first before it hit his glove. It should be a yes or no. Thank you. <laughs> Did it hit the ground or not? Yes or no? Were they discussing uh, movies tonight on Netflix? That took way too long. Three hits and one run so far for the Indians. As that one bounces in there. 
for ball one. He went, he definitely went on that one. Oh my goodness. That's a terrible call. Two balls, no strikes. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. There's a call. Two, two and one. Grounded. Oh, Rogers got a piece of it. Soft toss to Boots will end the inning. Rogers does not get to that ball. That's a tough play for Goolsby. As it is, the Indians will strand two and will head to the bottom of the second. With the Indians leading one to nothing. You are watching Friendswood Mustang Baseball on VipeLive.com. Senior Drew Harris hitting 302, excuse me, 308 on the year. Watches that one off the plate, and it's one and one. always had a good on-base percentage, knows the strike zone, takes walks, doesn't chase very often. Here's the 2-1. Got a good fastball to hit, just swung through it, 2-2. Two and two. Girls softball going tonight as well. Looks like the girls are playing uh, uh, Galveston ball tours. So you'll hear a couple of different things going on from the crowd tonight. Good movement on that one. Stayed inside though and the count runs full. Straight up. Who's going to take charge of it? I'll let the pitcher do it. And he actually makes the catch. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but it's an out, and it's four retired in a row by Vasala. Brings up the center fielder, Brantley, hitting 302. Mustang. 
things have overall fared very well against Santa Fe. There was some years there, 86 to 93, I think uh, Santa Fe got the better of the Mustangs. Inside. Three balls and no strikes to Ty Brantley. And that stays inside. So a four pitch walk after retiring four in a row. I'll bring up Colin Goolsby. Goolsby hitting 204. And joining us in the booth now is uh, Concordia alum, former first baseman, Connor Birch. Currently a coach over at the Friendswood Junior High. And pitch off the plate for Bar and And uh, a uh, coach for BAM Baseball coming off a big win with his 12U this weekend. u triple -S -S -A. I won a U-Triple-S-A tournament. Shout out to those guys. Popped up and see if that stays in play. First baseman calling for it. Wind's pushing it though. It's going to make the stands. There's that win for you. One out, one on for Willsby. Pretty good lead at first. Curveball hit into the hole, and oh, great play by the third baseman. They're going to get one out of it, and let's say they pulled him off the bag. Good job getting one, though. Goolsby hits into a filler's choice, brings up Piercy. Piercy had a spectacular play in the top half of the inning. I got, I got a couple of texts on that play. Two outs. Mustangs down a run. be over there in the scoring position. Not much of a pause there. No call from field umpire. As Piercy swings through that curveball and it's on one. Ellie Lyko doing the scoreboard tonight. He's made fewer errors than softly hit up the middle. And the pitch, not in time. Goolsby with a great jump. Beats it out. And it will be an infield hit for Piercy. Piercy owes Goolsby a lunch for that one. Brings up the right fielder, senior Tatum Black. Got some the Godfather, Bobby Black, all-knowing. Showing butt, with two outs. Yeah. Bring the third baseman in a step. Again, he would be bunting for a hit. Heading the count, one up. Lifted to center field, but it's right at the center fielder. Goes back a step, comes in two, will make the catch. So two on and two left on. As the Mustangs finally 
put a couple of base runners on, but unable to push one across. We'll head to the top of the third. Indians still lead this one, one to nothing. You're watching Friendswood Mustang Baseball on Fight Live. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. single just a bit high the one up -oh. good pitch in there for a called strike it's one -oh. tried to get Connor Birch on last home game that I called and he started getting some some nerves line shot up the middle for a base hit so Lozano stays hot with the stick. It's two for two tonight. Here's Vasala. Struck out looking his first time. pitches and the ones he does get to home plate they've been kind of hanging there that's a good one Masala lays off of it though and it's two and one two one grounded right side Rogers will have to take it himself Goolsby doesn't get there again. Does move the runner over to third base with two outs. Again, Goolsby learning pretty much a new position. 
figure it out. <laughs> sure, the coaches let him hear it when he gets in the dugout again. That any time the ball's on the right side, he's got to get hustling. There's a one. Good breaking ball. Stroud swings through that one. It's on two. Got him to chase, Maxie with the tag out. And that's where they'll leave him. Fourth strikeout for Rogers. And the Mustangs trailing the hit, column four and one, and the score one nothing. Watching Friendswood Mustang Baseball on Vibe Live. Shout out to Logan Maxey, cousin of Dylan. Logan just went under surgery for uh, it was a torn meniscus, but it was knee surgery. That'll give him time to sit back and think about where he really wants to go to high school, which is. Hopefully, you know, friends would transfer over here. Liner back up. And a 1 3 put out. There's one away here in the bottom of the third. Here's Logan Maxey's cousin, Dylan Maxey, lined out to center on the. night over which direction the wind would be blowing today. Curveball off the plate and it's 1-0. Dylan blamed his app for his misinformation. You gotta have a pretty good north wind to get it coming out of here. Got a good fastball. He has not gotten, well, that's nice to know that they're not getting a low strike either. 2-0 to Dylan. See if he challenges him. Fastball up, and it's 3-0. And, Dylan pretty much has been given the green light this year. We've seen him swing 3-0 a couple of times. He can tie it up with one swing. Fastball down the gut. Four called strike. Hammered into Arizona, but foul. Yeah. 
I doubt you're going to see the fastball again. Breaking ball down. <laughs> Dillon is a threat to steal. A couple stolen bases this year. And lead off walk. Would have been nice. But with one out, he can still will probably be trying to take second base. Pitch down is 1-0. Travis Moore at first, Benavides coaching third. Pretty big lead by Maxi. Line in the right center. Long run for the right center fielder. He will run it down though. That wind is just not helping the Mustangs tonight. Back to back flyouts by South to the center field. Little dribbler. Maxi had the base stolen. Oh, wow, kids that play by the third baseman. This Maxi rounded the bag a little too far. But that'll be an error on the third baseman. So the E5 for Mustangs in business. Two outs. And a tying run at second. We'll bring up the DH, Drew Harris. Harris 0 for 1. And 308 on the year. And switching out with Perry a little bit. Good curveball in there for a called strike. Sure, what kind of number you'd be throwing out here with two on and two out? <laughs> Pretty much need a hit. Throws his hands and fouls that one. He's in the hole. 0 and 2. And this, the DH has been up for grabs. Not ever, nobody has really taken over that role. Perry's done a pretty good job. Drew's done a pretty good job. Mason Munns has had some shots at it. Just kind of waiting to see somebody just grab it and take, take that role for themselves. Fastball in on the hands, and it's one and two. Big holes on the left and right side with middle infielders holding Dillon on with two outs. Line into right field and it will be caught by the center fielder. So Mustangs continue to hit fly balls into the outfield and Kyler Thompson continues to run them down. As he gets two more that inning. Mustangs will strand two and will head to the top of the fourth. Mustangs trail one to nothing. You are watching Friendswood Mustang Baseball.
first baseman Bryce Smith leading off here in the fourth. Takes a strike, a low strike on the outside corner. Again, glad to be back with you, everybody. I'm sorry I missed last game. And I understand we didn't get on the air until about the third or fourth innings. I apologize for that. That had nothing to do with Fritz. He's been stellar here tonight. We got to hear a third of the national anthem only in the booth. Started getting some glances from players and finally realized it was plugged in all the way. But, you know, three quarters of the anthem is better than no anthem. And that's been pretty much it tonight. Teacher's Appreciation Day. He had that thrown at him at the last minute. Filling in for Cade, who's is, uh, using the work excuse. Good pitch up in the zone. And Chase, one and two. Just got a piece. Bryce has singled and walked in his two plate appearances. That pitch is up and it's two and two. And that breaking ball has just, he's had struggle, struggles with it. And I'm telling you, it's the, the 30 mile an hour wind at your back. It just does not break like you want it to. Fastball, fine. Ball hit down the left field line. Should end up foul. It does. It looked like trouble off the bat. And help push it foul. Payoff pitch to Smith. This one lined the same way and will also end up foul. Good little battle they got going here. Indians have had the leadoff guy on two out of the first three innings. This hit hard and still slicing away, and it will drop. My goodness. So after going that way twice, no adjustment made by the outfield, and that one will drop in for a leadoff single. Bryce Smith two for two tonight. Here's Steven De Los Santos. Showing bunt. Fouls that one back. Showing bunt again, does not get it down. And that's just all mechanics there. It's not far enough out in front with that bat. Doesn't get into chase, it's one and two. Good breaking ball that time by Rogers. Jake's got lots of family listening in. Line past Piercy. Into left field, and there's now two on with nobody out. Back to back hits. And that was another breaking ball that just caught too much of the plate. Here's the catcher, Ostermeyer. He was thrown.
thrown out on a nice play by Piercy. Back in the second inning. And he comes up here with two on and nobody out. You kind of expect uh, Wolf to show Bunn again. He's not. Yeah. Finally got a check swing call. First one of the night. Not sure how the home plate up here missed that one. Pitch was up, so that was an eye level strike. Now it's turning around, showing butt. Misses that one. It's one and two. Rodgers has thrown for strikes with his curve. They've hit, and they've laid off the ones that are in the dirt. Austin Meyer just gets a piece of it. Stay alive. It stays two and two. Thanks to our QA in the studio, Shane. Make sure we're, we can be seen and heard tonight. corner and not a called strike wow boots had to lay out to keep it from going into right field and now the ball was called full count man that looked like a good pitch here's the three two curve ball had him looking fastball and you can tell the Last minute, just threw his hands out there, hoping to make contact. Great pitch calling there by the Mustangs. Sixth strikeout for Rogers. There's a good breaking pitch. Things not turning as many double plays this year as last year. Showing butt. Back pick at second. single by Jaco. A huge run for the Indians. And it's runners at first and third with one away. Mustangs going to lose this one. It will be known as the Fritz Birch Jinx. We'll write about it in all the history books. Or the Cade Colorado Collapse. Two on. 
for Thompson. That's a strike one from Rogers. Had Boots come up with that ball, that was a double play ball. It was hit hard enough they could have turned two. Finally got a player to chase that curve ball, and it's 0-2. Seven hits for the Indians. One hit for the Mustangs. Indians lead 2-0. That one gets by Dillon, but not far enough where anybody can advance. Dillon actually hopped up a little bit on that one. It was more, more maxi error than Rogers. Rogers had been bouncing some curveballs in, but that one was a straight fastball. She skipped the one-two. Slowly hit. Piercy comes in, makes a nice play. But a throw is going to pull Landry off. It'll be an E5. He did everything right. Charged the ball, but his throws pulls Boots off the bag. And I'm not sure why the runner at third doesn't score on that, but Bases are now loaded. De Los Santos at third, Jaco at second. And Thompson at first, brings up Burrow. Burrow with a steady diet of balls back to the pitcher tonight. Which would be nice to do it one more time. Two balls and a strike, nowhere to put him. going back to the full windup. The 2-1. That curveball stays up and it's 3-1. and one. Big pitch here from Rogers. Strike call on the inside corner. It runs the count full. Pitch, grounded to short. Clip for one, and not in time, and the ball goes in the dugout. So two runs are going to score. It'll be a throwing error on Goolsby. He's asking for interference at second base. Ran through the bag. There was no slide. <laughs> Reed South is out there pleading his case. The two IBM geniuses are meeting on the mound. But you know that Netflix series starts tonight. Get out of here early. Mm, I don't know. I didn't see him. It's going to cause trouble. We're going to go talk to the friends with coach together and tell him that neither one of us really saw that. I'm, just, I'm really sorry, Coach Benavides. I didn't see it. I didn't see it either. We were thinking about watching Netflix tonight in our thoughts were not at second base. Corey's unfortunately not going to win this one. So two runs are going to score. De Los Santos will score. Jacob will come in to score on the throwing error by Goolsby.
end up at second base. Dylan is making sure the umpire knows how to get out of here after the game without having to come across any parents. Very nice and Dylan Maxey. Here's Lozano. Lozano, two for two tonight. And opportunity to increase the, uh, the uh, Indians' lead. The runner at second. Stays up for ball one. Rogers deserving a little bit better here. That one low and away. Mustangs have two outs. They've committed two errors. Both coming this inning. Lozano's pitch. That's the same pitch he's lined back up the middle twice. He knows it. 2-1. Popped up left side. South calling for it. Wind is pushing it all the way over to third base. And that's where he will make the catch. But damage done. Three runs across. Indians increase their lead. 4-0. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. You're watching Vipe Live. Brantley set to lead it off for your Mustangs here in the bottom of the fourth. Jacob Rogers, 94 pitches thus far. I'm guessing his night is probably done at 94. First pitch, hammered foul. The 0 1. Lined up the middle. Second baseman over. And a nice play for out number one. Watching from Scottsdale, Arizona. Trying to get a little Mustang rally going here. Trailing by four. This ball lifted into right field. And the wind is really pushing it. Land 
foul, but stay in the playing field. Off the bat, it looked like it might be caught. Goolsby hitting to a fielder's choice his first time up. Hitting 204 on the season. Going to HBU next year. Just got a piece of that one. It's one and two. Tough night for Rogers and the infield. A couple of miscues. A couple of middle errors. Not your typical Mustang type of play. Goolsby goes down swinging. That is the first strikeout of the game for Vasala. Gonna bring up Piercy. Piercy's had an infield single. That's been the only hit for the Mustangs tonight. Line foul down the right side. Again, this is a battle for first place here in District 22-5A. Just got a piece of it, one and two. Not a huge Santa Fe crowd. Expected a little bit more from the Fe for a first place uh, battle here. Good ball, check swings. Good job just staying alive. Sala has been sharp. He's pounded the strike zone. Defense has played well behind him. Mustangs hit a lot of balls hard, but right at people. And Piercy takes a pitch on the inside corner. A called strike three. And it's a one, two, three, fourth inning. We'll head to the top of the fifth. Santa Fe for your Mustangs nothing. You're watching Pipe Live. Meyer will take over for the Mustangs. Again, thanks to our QA, Shane Sholwinski. 
in the studio. Good first pitch, called a ball. Another good breaking ball to the Salah. Finally gets the call. Salah 0 for 2. Hitting in the uh, cleanup spot tonight. No 1-1. One, one. Good pitch on the outside corner for a called strike. It's 1-2. One ball, two strikes. Got him looking. Come on, bring him up. Oh, my goodness. Case Meyer backs off. Two balls, two strikes. Just got a piece of it. Man. Waved at that one. One way here in the top of the fifth. And we'll bring up Jackson Stroud, the right fielder. Stroud over two, struck out looking in the first, and then struck out swinging in the third, both at the hands of Rogers. He takes strike one from Casemeyer. Ball to short. Good backhand by Reed. Throw across in time. Mustangs have yet to have a 1-2-3 inning defensively. And it will be up to Bryce Smith to continue that. He takes ball one from Case Meyer. for a called strike. You see Smith asked for time just to get Case Meyer out of his rhythm a little bit. Case said, well, I can either hit you or throw a strike. He elected to throw a strike. Good pitch on the outside corner for strike two. And that's got Smith hopping up and down. Smith, one for one with a walk. Or, I'm sorry, two for two with a walk and a run scored. He's down here, one and two to Case Meyer. Fastball down, and it's two and two. A good pitch for the umpire to ring him up. And had him waving at that one. A perfect inning for Case Meyer. Bookend strikeouts. One to start the inning and one to end it. We're through four and a half. Your Mustangs trail the Indians four nothing. You're watching Friendswood Mustang Baseball on Vibe Live. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association.
26, senior Tatum Black. Tatum Black set to lead it off for the Mustangs. Again, a solid one hit so far. Tatum, one of many flyouts to center field. He's 0 for 1, showing bunt. And should have taken that one for ball one. That was way out of the strike zone. Here's the 0 1. Got a good pitch to hit, but got under it and fouls it out of play. I'd like to have that pitch back, I'm sure. Vasala ahead 0 2 here to Tatum. Comes in with some heat. Tatum stays alive. Indians hit the Mustang seven to one so far. Lead four to nothing. Curveball lifted to right field. Not hit very well. It's a long run for the right fielder, and he'll actually catch it heading into foul territory. Averages dropping left and right here as Vasala continues to. Just cruise through this Mustang lineup. <laughs> kind of hoping for the bottom half, somebody getting on here before the top of the order comes up. The pitch was up. Leichhardt fouls it back, and it's 0-1. Line in the left field for a base hit. Mustangs finally with a crooked number in the hit column. And first real legitimate hit tonight for the Mustangs. Brings up Maxie. And this is how big that run is. Instead of being three to nothing, it's four to nothing because the umpires did not call the interference at second base. It would have been a double play and kept it at 3-0. Ah, Dillon goes down, lifts it to left field. Long run. It will stay in the infield, though. And not a good swing. Maxie needing to show some patience there. Went after the first pitch and popped it up. Here's South, 0 for 2. Try and get him on for, and line in the left field for a base hit. So if you're going to put some runs across, here's your shot. Here's your leading RBI man. Landry with 24 RBIs this year. I think uh, next closest to him would be South with 13 RBIs. Landry with five home runs. He is the biggest power threat the Mustangs have. Fastball is down. One ball and no strikes. Wind is blowing dead end. But um, Boots Landry is a little Pacheco-esque. He's got that kind of power. Good fastball. Called strike is one to one. 
Speaking of Pacheco, he saw a post. He went yard twice against the Yankees in a rookie preseason game this week. Both opposite field shots, no less. Oh, get him or this bat. Oh, they're gonna say, oh it got his bat. They're going to get a break. They're going to get a break. Wolf's going to argue that hit the bat, which is what my argument would be. He goes, um, he's swinging. That's it. No, no I'm not. I, that's not what I saw. So that's going to stay. Bases are now loaded. I'd agree with Ronnie Wolf on that one. So Harris with a chance to tie this game up. <laughs> it's so hard for a high school kid to come up with bases loaded down for nothing and not think about. You know, I could tie this game up with one swing. Drew, no home runs on the season. I would take a base hit up the middle. He looks at strike one. And that's the other thing you see a lot of high school kids do. Take a first pitch strike with bases loaded when you know the pitcher wants to get ahead. Two outs in the inning. Bases loaded. Mustangs with their biggest threat thus far. Curveball does not come back around. It's 1-1. One one. That almost caught the corner. Vasala wanted it. Drew 3.08 on the season. Popped out and flew out to center field. His two previous at-bats tonight. The 1-1. One, one. Another curveball hits him. And that's taking it like a teammate there. Again, he got a good curveball. If you're going to get smacked by one, that's, that's the one you want to get hit by. So a hit by pitch RBI puts the Mustangs on the board the first time tonight. South gets down to third and Landry down to second. And it will bring up the 302 hitting Ty Brantley. A little meeting on the mound. You got some guys on the bench with power. But Vasala, I mean, this was his game. Came into the inning with only one hit. It's up to three now. And the Mustangs finally putting a run across. Harris once again finding a way to get on base. Gets the Mustangs their first run of the game. Hit and off the glove at third. Gonna have to pick it up. He's got nowhere to go. Ball probably should have been caught, but it was hit so hard it popped out of the glove. Here's Goolsby, 2-0-4. With a chance to tie this game up. Swinging first pitch, and it's off the end of the bat, and it will be caught. What a catch out in center field. I can't believe that ball didn't get down. Tyler Thompson broke immediately on the ball and may have just saved this game for the Indians.
An unbelievable catch out in center field. Robs Goolsby of a game-tying single. Ball was not even hit that sh sharply at all. It looked like a hit all the way off the bat. And Thompson, out of nowhere, dives and makes the catch and keeps it a two-run game. Indians still lead it 4-2, and we're through five. You are watching Friendswood Mustang Baseball on Vibe Live. Mustangs trying to crawl back into this one. They trail 4-2 as we head to the top of the sixth. Uh, De Los Santos leading it off. I'm not sure what the count is yet. We'll see if they get the umpire to confirm it. Hit hard to center field. It's slicing and that will be down. My goodness. Man. De Los Santos, three for three tonight with a run scored. And the Indians again with their leadoff guy on. Austin Meyer with a late getting around for the sacrifice bot. It's 0 1. First base runner to reach against Case Meyer. by Maxi and it's 0-2. Nope, that would have been interesting had it been fair. Dylan actually I think was thinking he had a shot at the guy at second. You don't get too many of it. It was a 2-6-3 double plays. <laughs> Grounded right side. Boots for one to throw back. Not in time. Case Meyer getting over there and covering. They get the leadoff out. Here's Jaco. Jaco with a, a big RBI his last time up. Indians getting some production out of their nine hole hitter. The sweat box here at Bobby Black Field continues to torture those here in the booth. Grounder back up the middle. Case Meyer for one. South. 
a nice scoop over there by Boots Landry at first base. And Reed out there to thank him for saving a throwing error. <laughs> Mustangs turn two. It was a little ugly, but effective. We'll take it. Through five and a half. Indians four, Mustangs two. Back with the bottom half after this. You're watching Friendswood Mustang Baseball on Pipe Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Piercy's going to lead it off for your Mustangs here in the bottom of the sixth. Piercy one for two, infield single and a strikeout looking. Tough pitch to strike out on. Very controversial pitch. A little bit tight, but did not get the call. Breaking ball again. Doesn't get the call there, and it's 0-1. She may be dating the home plate umpire's granddaughter. He has not got a call here tonight. Stays off the plate, and it's one on one. Mustangs have not done a good job getting their leadoff guy on tonight. As he waves at that one, he's down to the count. One and two. Uh, chase that one up in the zone. Just got a piece of it. Up and out of play. Not sure why the Friendswood score did not come up initially. We'll attribute that to the Fritz Birch jink that's going on this evening. Just a number of miscues. Good news is Cade lost service a little while ago, so. He doesn't know what's going on. And he's missed. <laughs> he doesn't know with a sweat box he's missing here tonight as well. Good pitch and ripped into left field. Piercy will round first and be happy with a leadoff single. Benavides is wanting to know if Birch has any eligibility in high school left. Turns out he does not. So it looks like Perry will be batting. Perry 
Carey wearing my high school number. I always have a little favoritism for the guys wearing that one. Check with Ellie and see what Perry's hitting on the year. And Perry takes ball one. I like it. Here's it first. Oh. Perry knew the second he tried to start a swing, tried to actually hold up. Went after a fastball up in his eyes and swung one. Kind of lucky he did not put that in play. This is another one of those instances where you try to tell a high school kid not to hit one out of the park because you know that's all they're thinking. I can tie this game up with one swing. Curve ball, that's fouled off. That pitch was up in zone two. So instead of looking at three and zero, oh, it's one and two to Perry. That one, good job by Perry laying off that pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Big hole on the right side. Solid keeping Piercy close over there at first base. Chased another high fastball. So after showing great patience at the beginning of the at bat, Perry then swings at three pitches out of the zone. And that's a case of just trying to do too much. Got to take what's given to you. Here's Lockhart before you get to Maxi. Just want to stay out of the double play here. Lockhart, 242 on the year. He's one for two, scored, singled and scored his last time up. And takes an off speed pitch in there for a called strike. Bobby Black telling a story before the game about a Dickinson player that used to sharpen the eyelets of his first baseman's mitt. <laughs> Hit on the hands and slicing foul. Almost another spectacular catch out there by the Santa Fe outfield. But Lockhart We'll get another chance. And the uh, first baseman kept slapping players over there, and players kept coming back to the bag, uh, uh, dugout bloody. But we had an equalizer in games like that. His name was Ronnie Hawkins. <laughs> Ronnie put an end to that. Great, great three-sport athlete was Hawkins. Football, baseball, basketball. That's a balk. Slow roller. Can they get one? They oh, bobbled. They're not even going to say it was on the transfer. But bobbled immediately. And that's where you want to just take the out. That may, be, that may be the maxi effect. Trying to get out of a double play so you don't have to face maxi. Instead, it's an error on the second baseman. So an E4 puts runners at first and second and really nowhere to put Dillon. Maxie 0 for 2 with a walk. And 
Dillon's the one guy other than Boots who can turn this game around in a hurry, and he takes ball one. Dillon, eight doubles on the year. Six home runs last year, none this year. But still hitting 464. The 0 1. Fastball, swinging and as you can tell where he was trying to put that one. <laughs> Good location by Vasala. Did not put that down the middle. That was out towards right, and that's the way Dylan should have hit it. One ball, one strike, one out, two on for the Mustangs. Curveball down, it's two and one. South is on deck. He has two home runs on the year. The one, two. Fastball didn't get him to chase. That was the pitch that got Perry. And let's see. You got South and then Landry. Fastball smashed into center field. Long run for the center fielder, and it will be over his head. Here comes 1-1. One, one. The relay is bobbled, and this game is tied. Maxi with the Karate Kid pose out on second base has tied this game with his ninth double of the year. A great effort by Thompson to get to that ball. Maxi hitting it into the teeth of this 30 mile an hour wind, but he got all of it. Two runs across, Mustangs have tied it. Tying run now at second base for South. South swinging first pitch, needs some help from the wind. And he's going to get it. Wow. That was a gift. That's a pop out on any other day and out number two. Down, Ooh, good secondary, great block there. Keep Dylan at second base. Could this be known as the Birch Fritz comeback? Could it be? What is going on here at Bobby Black Field? One ball, one strike, one out. Pitch off the plate. And south now in another hitter's count <clears throat> with the ever so dangerous Boots Landry on deck. You got a place to put south if you want to, but then you got to face Boots. Expect the pitch to get to hit here. He does get one. Lines it to right field. It's fading away from the right fielder, and it will be down for a base hit. Here comes Maxie. Turn it over the Jets. Relay will not be in time, and Mustangs go ahead. An RBI go-ahead triple by Reed South. And the Fritz Birch comeback continues here. Up, 
Ironically, as Colorado Cade lost service. Not sure what to do with that. Mustangs now lead five to four. That looks like that might be it for Masala. My gosh. <laughs> Mustangs now seven hits and five runs. No. Not sure what kind of pep talk that was. It wasn't a <laughs> it wasn't a sweet one, I'll tell you that. Keep in mind the uh ball that popped out of the third baseman's glove that kept this inning alive. Infield will come in with one out and a runner on third. Landry takes a ball low, but oh my goodness, he's going to call it a strike. My, my. Well, that would have been a good ball to hit if you wanted a ground ball. Boots looking for something to get up in the air. Fouls this one back. It's 0-2. Just got to put it in play now. So important to get that run home from third with less than two out. And yes, the voice is going. It has nothing to do with this game. Allergies are in the air. 0 2, got a piece of it, stayed alive. Landry with a chance to really put an exclamation mark on this ending. Pops this one up, see what the wind does to it. And it's going to land fair in play. That was a catchable ball. Give the dugout some credit there. I think uh, players might have had something to do with that. Not physically, mind you, just verbally. O2 to Birch. One out, runner at third. Good pitch, hammered deep to right field. Going, going, gone, but foul. <laughs> Woo. Almost home run number six. The O2. Great idea. Great idea, O2. Boots having nothing to do with that one. Reset again. Stays alive. Pitch count. 101. 101 pitches for Vasala. Ooh, man. That's a lot on any arm. Much less a high school kid. 54 this inning. 54 through 4, okay. The 1 2. Inside does not get the call. 2 and 2. Masala barking at home plate umpire. Again, motions high. This game is for first place in District 22 5A. Curveball, line foul, and out of play down the left field line. And Boots continues to have a great at bat. And the pitch count continues to rise for Vasala. Field still in on the grass, trying to keep that runner at third. The 2-2 to Landry. 
Fastball up and in. Masala wanted the call. First base, showing his emotions. And now that will get a warning. Bryce Smith all the way into the mound to voice his displeasure. And the at-bat continues. Three balls, two strikes. This is High school baseball drama at its best. Boots Landry providing the encore here. Fastball fouled. And this continues. Reed South, 90 feet away, trying to. Extend the score and extend this inning. The 3 2 fastball off the handle. And after all of that, a soft grounder to short. And guess who's up? Mr. Hit by Pitch. We got all this going in the first place, Drew Harris. Uh oh. This is it. Birch is going in. Travis Moore in. Uh -oh. 106. Asking for a pitch count. He's at 106. If you want to leave him in there? Not sure if that's. One oh six is nothing. Drew with an RBI hit by pitch his last time up. With a chance to extend the lead. Looks at a good fastball for strike one. That may be the best pitch he gets to see. And he gets whacked again. Reed trying to come home just for fun. Some mouthing going on. Corey trying to get Reed back to third base. I'm sorry. That, look, that looked like the uh, seventh inning of the Bad News Bears game. We got the last two little guys to get hit so Kelly Lee could come up. Two on, two out. Three across for the Mustangs. Fastball! Hammered in left center field. Long run for Tyre, and he will get to this one. So the outfielder has robbed several Mustangs tonight. This time it's Brantley. Man, good inning, though, for the Mustangs as they take the lead 5 4. And we will head to the top of the sevens. Mustangs, three outs away from. Coming back and winning this District 22-5A. You're watching Friendswood Mustang Baseball on Vipe Live.
The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Here we go, Mustangs three outs away. Case Meyer on the mound. And he's got the top of the order. Lined, left side. S Reed, did he get him? No. I'm sorry, that was Goolsby. I'm so used to South Bend on, on that side. Uh, Goolsby with a good effort. So another leadoff batter reaches. And they bring up Burroughs. See if they elect to bunt here. They're squaring around early, showing bunt. Curveball. Taken for a ball. Piercy in on the grass at third. Showing bunt again. And it's 2-0. and oh. Case Meyer needs to come in with a strike here. And see if uh, Wolf has him swinging away. Which is what I would do. But nope, going to still try and sacrifice. Good bunt. Goolsby. Where he's supposed to be. At a boy. And that's how it's done, folks. So the 1-3, uh, sorry, 1-4 over there. This will be covering, but it does move the tying run to second base. And Lozano is up. Popped out his last time. Discussion going on over it down the third baseline between uh, Wolf and the home plate umpire. Pitch on the inside corner. Call a ball. My goodness. Mm. Wow. The 1 0. Comes around for a called strike. It's 1 and 1. Take another. Pop out to the infield here. Fastball popped up, infield. Goolsby under it for out number two. Here's Asala. He ought to be tired. Struck out his last time. And he looks at a called strike. 
Casemeyer two strikes away from completing what will be known as grounded left side tough play for Pierce he cuts it off the throw across Casemeyer The Birch Fritz comeback comes to fruition as the Mustangs rally for five runs in the fifth and sixth innings to take this game five to four over the Santa Fe Indians. This is going to be a fun, fun district this year, folks. Several teams in the mix. Laporte's right in there. Texas City not too far behind. And as always, this Friendswood Santa Fe matchup did not disappoint. Magic all coming in the fifth and sixth innings. Lockhart got it started with a single to left field. South with a single, and then a couple of hit by pitches, none bigger than the one by Drew Harris, puts the Mustangs on the board. They get to that inning, and then they go to the sixth inning, and with two on, it was Maxi Magic again as he hits one off the center fielder wall. Two runs come around to score, makes it a tie game, and the Mustangs push that fifth run across. And they win it 5-4. to four. For Shane Shalinski, our QA, our PA announcer, Josh Fritz, came in as Frittatas. He'll leave as Fritz. Our pitch counter, Connor Birch, BAM coach extraordinaire. And our scoreboard assistant tonight, Ellie Lightko, in the... Uh, taking the place of her father who's in Colorado stuck. I'm Joe Hollier. Thanks again for joining us here on Vipe Live. We'll catch you at the next Friendswood home game. Once again, your Friendswood Mustangs over the Santa Fe Indians, 5-4. to four. Good night, everybody.